after uh, the part of this uh, conference that dealt with uh, international uh, affairs and the international system. Um, so the Middle East, as we all know, is a region that's very composite, uh, rife with, with uh, tensions, challenges, some would say opportunities, and uh, no doubt uh, it is of uh, major uh, relevance, of course, to the uh, interest of uh, the State of Israel, also for the United States. So we will um, discuss a few dimensions of uh, the Middle East now and in the foreseeable future, as seen uh, from Washington and from Jerusalem. So with us, two distinguished speakers, uh, Mr. David Schenker from Washington, the Assistant Secretary of State uh, for um, Near Eastern Affairs, and from Israel, Colonel uh, Zohar Palti, the Director of the Political Military Bureau at the Ministry of Defense. Thank you for being with us. And uh, I would like to uh, have um, the discussion, uh, uh, or rather use the 30 minutes that we have to cover the whole of the Middle East um, under three headlines. One is uh, quite ambitious. I would like to ask you how do you see the Middle East, or would like to, to see the Middle East in five years, from Washington and Jerusalem. Uh, the second headline is uh, what's the way to get there, meaning to advance whatever vision for the Middle East that uh, uh, you would like to materialize. And uh, the final question, if we still have the time, we will discuss uh, uh, where uh, interests and mode of uh, action and policies of Jerusalem and Washington go hand in hand or not so much. So uh, uh, to the first question, a look on the future, David, please, five years from now, let's say. And I, uh, thank you and thank you uh, INSS for, for inviting me. Uh, well, I'm not going to make predictions about the future, but uh, I'll talk about priorities. Um, mm -hmm. And what we hope for and what we're working toward is toward a region that is more stable, uh, with a more prosperous economy, um, and a more satisfied people uh, throughout the region. Um, all those things go in hand in hand. Um, but to get there, um, and this is not going to be a surprise to anybody, uh, we in the administration think that you have to stop and roll back Iranian pernicious regional mm -hmm. destabilizing behavior. I think the sine qua non of a stable region, you can't have Iran going out and destabilizing four or five neighboring regional states. Um, second in that regard is uh, both Russian and China, and China behavior in the region. Um, which is uh, part of global power competition. We're gonna have to constrain that and also roll back uh, the role that Russia is playing here um, and present, I think, a very clear choice to the people of the region about, um, and to regimes about what you get with partnership with the United States and what you get with partnership with the Russians and, and with China. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a very stark contrast and I think uh, one that is demonstrated through uh, with what the states who are partners with the United States um, have, benefited, have benefited from. Um, so that's in a nutshell what I'd hope for in five years. Um, first of all, it's a great uh, privilege to be with you, David, as a friend. And uh, I heard a rumor that you deserve a happy birthday today, Anat. <laughs> so from all the audience over here, and thank you for inviting me. Thank you. The most important issue for the next five years is, I will look about the full glass over here, 
the special relationship with the United States, uh, the outstanding bond that we have with the American people regarding democracy, freedom of speech, and of course, from security point of view, the fact that the U.S. is standing side by side, right beside us, give us the ability to run this country based on our mutual virtues and to keep the security and the safety of all of our families over here. This is the most important issue. The second issue is to preserve and to keep and to enhance the peace, first of all with Egypt and side by side with Jordan. This is one of the most fundamental in our national security interest to preserve and to keep this peace with these two countries. Our longest border with Jordan, Jordan is facing tremendous challenges from the refugees in the last years, economical challenges, and uh, the most important is to keep our great relationship with the kingdoms. I would like to see in the next five years also that, like in the last four decades, that there is not going to be any existential threat on Israel, mainly regarding the Iranian, uh, of course, ambitions to get a nuclear, and thank God, and thank to so many people, that in the last three decades, all of us succeed to prevent from the Iranian to get whatever they want. I like to see that they're reducing the level of influence in the region, starting with Afghanistan, continue to, of course, Iran, then Iraq, then Syria, then Lebanon. This year, question must be broken. I like to see less and less surface-to-surface -surface missiles, cruise missiles, UAVs against the states of Israel. I like to see the Iranians are getting back home and leaving Syria immediately without no boots on the ground over there, or no whatever. Less PGMs in Lebanon, less PGMs in Gaza, and hopefully a better relationship with our board, and uh, we have a glimpse of evidence that we are getting there slowly, slowly, but safety. It seems to me that this is a good vision for a start. Well, I, I think that uh, nobody can or would like to disagree with the goals you stated. Uh, uh, I mean, it's impossible to, you know, reject ideas such as, uh, well, uh, peaceful environment and uh, stability and prosperity and less uh, uh, security threats. But the question is, considering all the course of uh, uh, threats and concern around this very vast uh, problematic region, you even mentioned Afghanistan, uh, as if we don't have enough uh, issues to think about in the closer neighborhood. Uh, what's the way to get there? I mean, Zoa, maybe you will start with uh, listing uh, um, several strategies, policies they, that you think will promote, uh, um, uh, um, you know, um, achieving uh, several of the goals you mentioned. First of all, our policy is very clear uh, to take care about the security and the safety of the states of Israel and the citizens that's living over here. Anyone that is jeopardizing our security uh, has got a problem. In and the what sense? The most important issue is to keep that the IDF and all the security um, organization over here in Israel strong with uh, outstanding technologi technological capabilities and, of course, to invest in the security in a way that we will have the ability to operate all over whenever um, the decision makers want us to operate. It's so important we will keep to do our courtesy visiting all over the Middle East. And uh, over here, we are very uh, grateful for the American to share with us the best technology from the JSF till uh, all the other components. It's so important that we will continue to invest in our BMD programs. The last decade, it was the decade of the Iron Dome. 
the fact that the Americans are investing uh, in our technology regarding the David Sling, the arrows, and all the other advanced uh, systems that we have, that by doing that, we are protecting the states of Israel and so many lives are safe because of those. Our challenge is to keep all these issues together. Deterrence regarding Lebanon, we like to see that Nasrallah is continue to live in a bunker. It's so important. We like to see that we still have deterrence from the Second Lebanon War, and thank God that the last decade what used to be very quiet in Lebanon. The last decade was, in general, beside of terrorist, or terror attacks from time to time. The West Bank, Judea and Samaria, we've been out of the equation. Let's keep it like that. The coordinations and the security with uh, the Palestinian Authority over here is so important to keep it like that, but mainly in those days. It's so important to challenge the challenges that we have in the South, mainly in Gaza, but also we have radicals like Daesh and things like that in Sinai. And we'll have to keep to operate, to invest a lot of intel and to combine the holy triangle between Intel technology and operation capabilities. And it seems to me we can meet the challenges, although there are uh, no doubt that they are serious. So I'd say the, <clears throat> the most important factor here is continued American engagement. Um, it, people have been talking about how we're leaving the Middle East. Mm -hmm. We are not leaving the Middle East. We are invested. We are here to stay. Thank you for uh, mentioning this issue. Um, no, uh, I think people got it wrong. Um, we have friends, we have close allies like Israel, um, unshakable bonds, and, um, and, and really essential national interests in the region. And so uh, we have deployed throughout the region, and we will continue to do so, including in Iraq. Um, so our involvement is number one. Our alliances, like with Israel, but also our, our partnership with states like Jordan, the Gulf, um, these will, and our, the coalitions that we built, um, will better enable us to take on the challenge of, uh, of Iranian threat or Iranian encroachment, destabilizing behavior, um, and better help to establish a, a stable region. Um, what else can I tell you? I mean, uh, across the board, we are, um, we are committed. There's a counterterrorism, there is energy, and there is friendship, shared values, and um, I think we, uh, we have a shared vision of the region and a shared threat perception. So, uh, yeah, I think that's how we, how we get there. Thank you. Um, you mentioned the uh, friendship. And uh, we didn't need uh, any recent uh, proof for the close relations between Washington and Jerusalem. I'm talking about the past few days. But there's uh, a question I think that we should ask where and how uh, um, the uh, interests and policies of the US and Israel really meet and are coordinated, and perhaps there are areas of interest where the policies are not so uh, uh, much on, on the same page. And I will uh, um, uh, be more, more concrete. Let's try and respond to this question with regard to opportunities that are existing in uh, the region that should be used, employed, exploited. Uh, and there are probably some opportunities that Israel and Jews uh, and, and, and uh, the United States should uh, create in order to uh, serve their interests uh, uh, in the region. So can you talk uh, um, a bit more about opportunities as a uh, means to promote uh, um, national goals? Well, listen, let me start um, by saying that, that I didn't mention in, the, in my last uh, intervention. It, it is uh, 
the close coordination mm -hmm. that we have with our allies. Um, operationally, intelligence sharing, it's so deep. Um, uh, and it's such a benefit, I think, to, to both of us and both of our common interests. Um, we, the shared, uh, what, we, what we share is so great. Um, and so I don't see sort of rocky road or separation um, between us on, um, on our perception of issue, um, except for perhaps in one regard that uh, has sometimes in the past been a concern. Um, and that uh, comes to China, actually, has been uh, a point of contention between the United States um, and Israel, um, historically, at one point. Um, and I'm thinking back to the, the Bush administration, which had, um, as you know, I think uh, one of the most uh, pro-Israel departments of defense in the history of the United States, who recall Paul Wolfowitz was there and Doug Fife was the undersecretary for policy. And there was a disagreement about, uh, about what uh, decisions had been made in Israel to do with, with China, and it, it didn't end well. We had, we had uh, it was not helpful, I think, to our relationship. And we came to an understanding, and we're on much better footing now. But this is really where the rubber hits the road, I think, for the, the United States. And so, um, you know, we are talking with our Israeli partners about what we can do to improve sort of mechanisms for dealing with China in Israel. Um, we have uh, a mechanism in, Israel, in the United States where um, these things are looked at in terms of national security um, and reviewed by the interagency, and it's mandatory. And we're, we're hoping that Israel can get to, to something like that. I think it, it's important for our relationship. And Zal, what's your take uh, on the issue of opportunities and uh, policies? Opportunities we've got a lot. I touch, um, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will mention a few of them. First of all, the Americans are playing a vital role over here in the stability of the Middle East. Almost everything is coordinated with the American. The relationship with the Americans are outstanding in all levels. Mainly, I'm coming from the security business, so I can uh, um, give you the sense that over here, the level of the intensity with the Americans, it's enormous, it's outstanding. We like to keep it like that. We like to see much more R&D between us and the Americans, like always, with the high-tech companies. We spoke about in the previous session regarding the future, AI, all the issue of cyber, all the issue of satellites, all the issue of nanosatellites, and things like that. This is the trends, this is the opportunity that we have the Americans. Not to, that we compare Atelier Pituach to Silicon Valley, but the joint venture that we've got together over here, huge opportunity over here. The fact that the Israelis are so open to the Americans to share our brain, our knowledge, our experience, I like to see it, and this is a outstanding, it seems to me, it's a great opportunity. The great relationship that the Americans got and the influence that they've got in the Gulf the Gulf is step by step. This is an opportunity. We like to see a Middle East that is much more open over here. And uh, it seems to me that, as I mentioned before, step by step, they understand also that we are here. We are going nowhere. And we are the guys over here that know how to stand against major challenges over here in the region. We have opportunity with the Americans to stop the Iranians' ambition to nuclear. Only the Americans and us can do something like that. I wish that the European, mainly the E3, will join the American with the maximum pressure regarding the Iranian. This is the right thing to do. The policy that American are leading, this is the time right now um, to join and to be as a fist against the Iranian ambition over here in the region and the aggressive in the region. The last week showed that the Americans are here. The deterrence is here. And it seems to me that over here, regarding the Iranian issue, we have a great opportunity. Yeah, uh, this is uh, the um, opportunities um, uh, uh, that can be used uh, or employed by Washington and Jerusalem all together. Can you, uh, the two of you, go deeper into or elaborate upon opportunities in the region 
with regard to issues um, not only uh, Iranian uh, destabilizing conduct and uh, nuclear ambitions. Um, for example, uh, domestic turmoils across the region that have the tendency to spill over to neighboring uh, uh, countries. Well, one of the, 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 the best thing that we can work on together is the outreach to the Gulf countries, to the Arab world. Mm -hmm. The United States is a bridge. Uh, Israel um, has done, I think, a, a great job of reaching out, um, but the United States can play a facilitating role in that regard and, and has done so. And I think this is also a very productive area of cooperation. I, I see, um, looking forward, um, uh, Israel's participation in Expo for example, in the Emirates uh, coming up. This is a great opportunity. There, there, there are other things that have been done and different levels of, of quiet, uh, quiet dialogue between Israel and, and the, these Arab countries, and much more can be done, and uh, we, we stand ready to help. Other issues, of course, it's so important that America will continue to influence Iraq. Um, the, um, the present and the influence that the Americans got on Iraq is something, it's like an advil to the region over here. And over here we see opportunity that one day, inshallah, things will become better over there. Hopefully we'll see less and less Iranian involvement in Iraq. No doubt that if, God forbid, something will rock the boat over there, it will be tremendous influence over here as, as long as the Americans are strong and have an influence, this is the most important. The other issue that we have to work with the Americans, of course, regarding Syria the day after. And Syria, after a decade, that Bashar used to kill more than half a million people from his own people, using chemical weapons against civilians, and all the terrible things that have done over there, uh, the American presence over there and the influence is so vital, it's vital for the security of Jordan. It's vital to us to try to kick the Iranians, as I mentioned before, out of Syria. Over here, we have a lot of work with the Americans uh, to try to stabilize some of our surrounding green countries and to reduce the level of tensions and the things that uh, really jeopardize our security. Well, um, if only part of the visions you mentioned when we started uh, our talk will materialize in five years, I think uh, we will all be very happy. But there will still be much uh, work to do because uh, this region is very, it has always been very dynamic. Um, please note that we managed to talk about the Middle East now and in five years uh, ahead, without mentioning the uh, Trump plan for Israeli-Palestinian uh, arrangement, maybe even peace, I don't know. But uh, uh, don't worry, uh, this uh, very uh, focal issue will be dealt with in the next sessions. Uh, thank you, David Schenker, for being with us. I know you have to leave, so have a, fa a safe flight back home. Thank you, Zohar. Uh, we, uh, we are left with uh, uh, many things to think about following what you say. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you all.